Hello everyone and welcome to Tab's Classic Bedtime Stories. I'm your host, Tabby, and today we will be reading Muppet Kids in Too Many Promises by Ellen Wise. Let's begin. One Monday morning, there was a big new poster hanging on the bulletin board next to the principal's office. Everybody crowded around to read it, talking excitedly. Gee, said Miss Picky. May 1st is only two weeks away. I am going to make a book with all the jump rope rhymes I know, said Skeeter. Let's see, uh, I'll start with A, my name is Alice, and I come from Alaska, and I sell artichokes. And off she skipped to think of more. Gonzo was excited too. I know just what I'm going to call mine, he said. Really great things you can do with fungus. That afternoon, Fozzie was walking home with Kermit. I was thinking, Kermit, he said. That poster said you could work together. I think it would be a lot of fun to write a book with someone. And since you're my best friend, well, I was thinking maybe we could both work on a joke book. Oh, uh, gee, said Kermit. I was thinking about doing a book myself, about baseball maybe. Oh, please, 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 begged Fozzie. We could do such a great book together. Uh, Fozzie, I could never say no to you said Kermit. That night, as Kermit was working on softening up his baseball mitt, the phone rang in the kitchen. It was Piggy. Hi, Kermit, said Piggy very, very sweetly. Kermit could tell right away that she wanted something. Kermit, said Miss Piggy, you know that book writing contest at school? Yes, said Kermit. Well, I was thinking, Kermie, said Piggy, since I have this great idea for a book, and since you are my very, very best good friend. Uh-huh, said Kermit. His heart was sinking. He knew what was coming next. You mean you'll work on the book with me, said Piggy. Kermie, that's so wonderful. Maybe you could write it and I could illustrate it. You see... It's a really romantic story about this girl who falls in love with a handsome dashing prince and and there's an evil queen and but but protested Kermit and then the evil queen casts a spell on the kingdom and everybody turns into donkeys and the prince is the only one who can save everybody because the spell doesn't work on him because he's so good and but but piggy Kermit tried to say Kermit felt torn. He didn't see how he could promise Fozzie and not Piggy. Piggy would feel so hurt and she would think it meant Kermit liked Fozzie better than her. Okay, said Kermit. I'll do it. I could never say no to you, Piggy. Oh, Kermit, you're going to do it with me. That's so wonderful, said Piggy. Now we'd better start soon. And so the next day, they began working. After school, Kermit and Piggy went to the park and began talking about their book. Do you really think that the handsome prince should save the girl? Said Kermit. I mean, isn't that a little, uh, old-fashioned? Maybe the girl should save the prince. No, 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 said Piggy. I know how, just how this book should be. The prince should save the girl. Okay said Kermit, sighing. When Kermit got home, he hardly had any time to finish his homework. He was racing to get his math problems done when his mother knocked on his door. I forgot to tell you, dear, she said. Fozzie called after school. He wants to get together with you tomorrow to work on the book you're both doing. Okay, Mom, said Kermit. I'll call him back. The next day, Kermit met Fozzie at the library, and they began working on their joke book. 
Do you think we need quite so many knock-knock jokes? Asked Kermit helpfully. We really have an awful lot of them. We definitely need a lot, said Fozzie firmly. They're the best ones. Kermit's eyes drifted over the baseball bookshelf in the library. All the books looked so interesting. Boy, I could really write some really good tips on throwing curveballs, thought Kermit wistfully, if I had the time. Come on, Kermit, said Fozzie. Let's find some more knock-knock jokes. That night, Kermit got home and ate dinner so late, he had to do his homework under the cover of a flashlight. For a whole week, Kermit's life went on in this way. One afternoon, he'd work with Fozzie. The next afternoon, he'd work with Piggy. He didn't have time to do his homework. He didn't have time to play baseball. And saddest of all, he didn't have any time at all to work on his How to Throw a Curveball book. On Monday, when the contest deadline was a week away, Mr. Bumper gave back the class his homework. When he passed by Kermit's desk, he stopped. Kermit, he said, I'm a little surprised at you. You usually do such a good job on your homework. But last week's was very rushed and sloppy. Are you having a problem? Kermit looked at the floor in embarrassment. I'm not having a problem, he says. I'll do better net this week. But he thought, I am having a problem. He took the school bus home from school that day. He wanted to get home as fast as he could so he would have plenty of time to do his homework. Fozzie sat next to him. Kermit, he said, we still need a lot of knock-knock jokes. Maybe you should come over to my house and work on the book with me this afternoon. Piggy was sitting in front of them. Hold on, Kermit, she said. You can't work on a book with Fozzie. You have to come over to my house and work on our book. I'm sorry, Piggy, said Fozzie. You must be mistaken. Kermit's working with me. Kermit stood up right on the school bus. Then he remembered that he wasn't supposed to do that. And he sat down with a plop. Wait a second, he yelled. I can't do this anymore. Fozzie and Piggy looked at him stunned. I know I said to both of you, Kermit said, but I never should have. I don't have time to write my baseball book. I don't even have time to do my homework. I'm a wreck. Besides, you both know what you want your books to be like. You don't need me. It's time for me to start saying no. I'm really sorry. Gee, said Fozzie. I didn't know you were feeling that way. I wish you hadn't said yes to start with, but I guess I can finish the book myself. I really do know what I want it to be like. Maybe you shouldn't have agreed to work with me, said Piggy, but it's okay. I can finish the book alone. Besides, I still think the prince should rescue the girl. Thanks, you guys, said Kermit. I feel like I was carrying a ton of bricks around, and I just put them down. So, Kermit, said Fozzie, do you think you can get your baseball book done in a week? I'm sure going to try, said Kermit with a grin. Kermit went right home and did all his homework. Then he started working on his book. A good curveball, he said, is just a matter of practice. And a little magic. He was very pleased with his first sentence, so he kept on going and he kept working every day that week. The morning of May 1st, Kermit walked to school with Fozzie and Piggy. Did you finish your book? asked Fozzie. I've got it right here, replied Kermit, patting his book bag. I've got mine too, said Piggy proudly. So do I, said Fozzie. It wound up being just lots and lots and lots of knock-knock jokes. Wow, said Kermit, glad he hadn't had to listen to all of them. Well, good luck to all of us. The three of them shook hands. 
It was very hard to wait until the judges decided. But at last, the big day came and a special assembly was called to announce the winner. We had a hard time choosing, said Mr. Bumper. The books were all wonderful, but there was one book that was just so interesting we had to award it first prize. The book was really great things you can do with fungus. Gonzo, come on up and get your prize. We teachers learned a lot from the books you students all wrote, said Mr. Bumper as he pinned on Gonzo's ribbon. I sure learned a lot about stuff you can do with fungus, said Gonzo happily. And I learned a lot too, said Kermit to himself, smiling as he clapped for Gonzo. About curveballs and about saying no. <laughs> And that's basically it, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed The Muppets, Kids, and Too Many Promises. And I also hope that y'all come back next time to Tab's Classic Bedtime Stories. Okay. Good night.